The time has come. We are going to start to let everyone know at home and the, these guys too, because you guys don't know who is out or who is in the top 50. So we're going to start to run through the list. But just to remind everybody at home why we're doing this. 20 years ago, NASCAR released a list of the top 50 drivers. We at Fox Sports wanted to update that list because I guess we can all agree a lot's happened yep. in, in two decades. A lot of drivers have had a lot of success. So here's a look at all of the Fox voters, the folks with our staff. And, and people on air here at Fox Sports who voted. And you can see the list is some drivers who are going to be on this top 50 list. And uh, people from top to bottom, people in the booth, people on pit road, folks that sit here every single day on NASCAR Race Hub. Now we are going to give to you the first names that are a part of our top 50 list in 2018. Here we go. Number 50, Joey Logano, 18 career cup wins, 20 times he's been to victory lane in the Xfinity Series. All right, number 49 is Greg Biffle. He's got a truck championship and Xfinity Series championship, 19 victories. Biffle, number 49. Number 48 is Marvin Panch, 17 cup wins. He's also got a victory in the Daytona 500 and the World 600. How about number 47? That title goes to Jeff Burton. He has two Coca-Cola 600 victories and a victory in the Southern 500. 500. Any surprises? Oh, I probably, based on my voting, I'm a little surprised that Joey Logano was as far down as 50th. When I look at his cup wins, his Xfinity Series wins, his Daytona 500 win, he, I think he was one of the first Rookie of the Year candidates to, to win multiple races. Well, I think Davey Allison had done it, but I think there are just so many things that I felt like Joey Logano should be higher than 50. Where did you have him, Larry? Do you have him? Do you have it written down, or do you have that one? Well, I had him 43rd. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I had him 43rd. I had Joey at 39. What about I, you guys? What's your reaction? Well, I got to agree with that. I had Joey at 43, and, and yep. I think he's on the rise. And when you look at Joey's career, the first two or three years of it, there was nothing to really write home about other than the one win in his rookie season. Outside of that, it was a lot of struggle. So he's done this all recently. He's got a lot of room to grow. Um, Greg Biffle, I felt like that was right about where I had him placed at. The one guy that was on that list that I didn't have on the list and, and – He's probably going to get me mad if he hears this. Is Jeff Burton? I just didn't have him quite in. He was one of those other guys I juggled, much like Newman. What, is that a is that a what have you done for me lately kind of thing that you guys mentioned with Ryan Newman as well? I mean, I know his stats are there, and I know he's retired, but is it because some of the other guys you think leapfrogged him? You know, I think for me, and and I, I was fortunate to race against Jeff Burton, very talented race car driver. And let, let's point this out: anybody that we're talking about right now is a great race car driver. It's just so hard to boil it down to fifty of them. Mm -hmm. For me, it was that middle part of the career where maybe this, there were some struggles. And, and things just went a little bit slow while teammates were having more success. And I was a fan back then, so I'd watch it as a kid, and that just I still had that instilled in my brain. Yeah, I did not have Marvin Panch on my list, but I guess now that I see him on there and I, I studied a little more after my voting, I, I'm glad to see that he did make the top 50 because he won some big races. He won the Daytona 500. He won the Coke 600. He finished second in the points. I think it was 1957. Even though I didn't have him on my original list, now that he's on there, I'm kind of relieved to see him on there. What strikes me, Bobby, about the first four is the balance in, in the eras in which they race. Obviously, Marvin Panch yep. was racing many years ago. Jeff Burton is retired and been out a while. Greg Biffle recently retired. Yep. And Joey Logano still competing today. Yeah, and I've raced against all those except for Marvin. But I do know Marvin. So <laughs> got to meet Marvin. But, but, yeah, I'm with you. I'm glad he made the top yeah. 50 because he's done yeah. a lot for the sport, and he's also a great driver, which is what this is about. Uh, you know, it did surprise me that Joey Logano isn't – you know, he's going to get better and he's going to go up that list, but, you know, he should be up there a little further. Well, he hopes he does anyway. Yeah, at least he <laughs> hopes he does, you know. And then I think Jeff Burton and, and uh, Greg Biffle, that, that, that list that was showed was about my list. So I, I, I think I feel pretty good about that. Uh -huh. And I, I know that, like, a Greg Biffle, I'm glad that he made the top 50 just for the fact that, you know, he's won the uh, Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and close to the, the, the Cup Championship. But no big and, victories, but, right? No crown jewels, and a lot of these guys do have those. But, but a lot of wins – Top fives, top tens. I looked at percentages and top ten percentages and fin how the average finish was. I put all that, in, I weighed that all in there, in there as well. Yeah, I, I definitely think Biff will win in those two championships. That definitely weighed in right there, yeah, even yeah. though it wasn't a cup championship. 
Number 46 yeah. is Tim Richmond. Yep. There Tim you go. Richmond. There you go. He won seven races in 1986. And 13 career cup wins, including a Southern 500. Here's number 45. 45, Richie Evans, guys. You know, this is uh, one that Adam and I had a conversation about earlier today, so we'll definitely get into that. And, and Sam Ard is number 44, the NASCAR Xfinity Series champion in 83 and 84. He had one cup start. You know, it's interesting because there's so much that we factor in to, to the vote. I, I want to get your reaction to this group because they fit a, a real unique set w when you break it down. Tim Richmond, very small body of work. We know his career was cut short. And the other two, one cup start between them, Sam Ard, Richie Evans. What, what's your reaction there? Well, I... I didn't race against Tim Richmond, but I did see him race. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say that a lot. I think I'm too old. But, but really, I think, you know, I, I, liked, I think Tim Richmond, I think you're right. Uh, the fact that he had a short career, but yet he was, the, the, you think about the wins that he had, and he didn't win a championship, but at the same time, top fives, top tens. I mean, he was a competitor week in and week out. He was one of the toughest guys in his career that was cut short in that at that time. But if you're talking about pure stats, which is what you guys told us at the beginning of the show, specifically you, Regan, you went off of these three guys. I mean, you look at Richie Evans. No, no races in NASCAR. And and I did not have Richie Evans this high on my list. I did have him on the list. He was the only guy that didn't run in the Cup Series that I did put on my list because I'm familiar with his body of work and what he did throughout the years. I guess the part for me that, that I struggle with and that I have a very difficult time with is, okay, there are so many great race car drivers out there that don't make it to the Cup Series. Well, let's just picture if these Cup drivers stayed in the smaller series and ran them for years and years and years, how much they would have stacked up wins and done those same things. And you might have a guy that only won five cup races that all of a sudden can win 10 championships elsewhere. So I had a hard time voting those guys in or, or giving them as much as I probably should have. And now Sam Ard wraps me back to the Jack Ingram topic. And pretty much the numbers are very close. Sam had 22 wins in the Xfinity Series, two championships. I'm tickled to death that Sam Ard is on there, but it makes me wrap back to why Jack Ingram is not in the top yeah. 50. I had the pleasure of working with Tim Richmond. I know the numbers are not that great because of such a short career, but I'm telling you one of the most talented race car drivers I've ever been around, I believe. And see, I think that's the insight that, that makes it difficult for, for us to understand on some of these is, is Shannon and I didn't race against anybody. We didn't compete with anybody. We had to go by the numbers. You know, you raced yeah, against these guys, guys, you yeah. know, and so I, I think that was a real difference maker when you go across the board of what it takes to put this list together and the diversity of, of all the voters. Okay, we, we got to go on, yep. right? So let's go to number 43, and, and we'll continue the countdown. Number 43 is Neil Bonnet. Neil, Neil, 18 career cup wins, also able to get to victory lane in the Southern 500. 42 here, Adam, is Curtis Turner, 17 victories. That's how many times he went to victory lane in NASCAR. Number 41 on our list, Alan Kowicki won the championship in 1992. As we know, his career was cut short, only five career victories. Only one guy has the name Handsome, handsome Harry Grant, number 40 on NASCAR Race Hub's top 50 drivers. And number 39 is Ricky Rudd. Now, this guy delivered at NASCAR's top level for many years, and uh, prior to Jeff Gordon breaking his longtime record, was known as NASCAR's Iron Man for all of those starts he made consecutively. What, what do you think about that batch? Another group, when you look at their resume, that accomplished a, a lot of good things at, at kind of different time frames. I'm, I'm glad to see Ricky Rudd on the list yeah. and, and glad to see where he is. You know, Ricky Rudd's a guy that, yes, he had the success. He had the win, wins. He was an Iron Man. But let's look at the fact that he won as an owner driver also. And, and I think that's a big deal, much like Alan Kowicki. Here's a guy that won a championship as an owner. I mean, he, he did a lot. Yeah, Alan Kowicki was so far ahead of his time. He had that mechanical engineering degree, and I think that paved the way for the way our sport is today. I've got to be honest, and they're going to probably take my Alabama game card away. <laughs> I did not have Neil Bonnet on there. I know his career was cut short, 18 wins. He did have some big wins, but that's one I did not Why? have on my top 50. Why? This, no big, big wins. I know he won a Coke 600 and a Southern 500 and then no championships. We, we keep wrapping it back yep. to the same topic about the championships. Speaking of championships, one of the criteria I had when I voted, if you had won a, a cup championship, you were on the list. A automatically, it got you in. Did, didn't necessarily get you in the top yep. 32, but it got you on the list. The only champion that's not going to make it, it appears, is Bill Rexford. It, you look at Alan Kowicki, he's a champion and he's outside the top 40. Are we surprised at all that a champion doesn't at least make it into the top 40? 
Yep, I'm surprised. Because <laughs> you were shaking your head yeah. when this, when we announced these most recent drivers, and so is that why you're shaking your head? Like, I, why were you shaking your head? I think so. I mean, I, you know, I, this this goes back to what earlier. I'm like, this was so hard, and you're even when you see the list that everybody's voted on, it's so hard to put it back. I was thinking about Harry again. I know you talked about championship, but thinking about the guys that that have won championships didn't make it into the top 40. I mean, you think they should? But then there's other guys like Harry Gant. He didn't win a championship. Right. Uh, you, you know, you think about Neil. He didn't win a championship. He won two Coke, yeah. Coke 600 wins and, and won Southern 500. So that's where it mixes up in their length of their career, top fives, top tens. What have they done? And, you know, I mean, that's what makes it so difficult. But winning the championship obviously was – a part of the uh, part of the stats, but it wasn't everything. Winning the championships, what got Alan Kowicki e even in conversation for the yep. top fifty. You yep. know, I know his career was cut short, but only five wins in the Cup Series. No question. The only reason we're talking about him is that championship. So here's my question that that I see out of this group. I see Tim Richmond and I see Alan Kowicki, whose personalities to me were. So almost bigger than kind of some of the stuff that they did on the racetrack. Now, I know you said it's stats, but for me personally voting, I could not take the human element out of it. It certainly didn't have me place people, but it had maybe maybe a, a tiebreaker type situation. Is that maybe the case with two of these guys? I, I don't know that it can be the case, though. Again, this is the 50 greatest drivers. It has nothing to do with human element. It has nothing to do with personality, what they, what they did off the racetrack, how they acted, how they treated the media, anything like that. This is purely... How were they on the racetrack and what did they do while they were behind the wheel of that race car with a helmet on their head? So, you know, for me, that didn't it didn't, doesn't affect this at all. And there's some guys that didn't win a championship, but yet they should be on the list because they won, they won a lot of races or they they did a lot of top fives, a lot of top tens, a lot of different things in the in the cup series. You think of Harry Gant did not win a championship, but at the same time, he is a guy that, you know, in age, he was better than a lot that were a lot younger. So a lot of that goes into, into play. Larry, you said it was Alan Kowicki's championship in, in 1992 that got him in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Can we say the same thing uh, about Tim Richmond and the season he was able to put together in 86 when he won those seven races? I, I think that's the year that he made the statement that he's is, is good and, and kind of lived up the billing. Yeah, right? in the mid-80s, you knew when they unloaded that 25 car for Hendrick Motorsports with Tim Richmond that he was going to probably be the guy you were going to have to beat. And it did not matter what racetrack we were at it seemed like. It didn't matter if we were at Riverside, a road course at Pocono, or anywhere in between. You knew that was going to be one of the guys you were going to have to beat. Let's go ahead and meet the next set of drivers. The first 12 are behind us. Now we go to number 38. Buddy Baker, 19 career wins and three times he won the Coke 600. How about this guy, number 37, Dale Earnhardt Jr., 26 victories, two of those in the Daytona 500, and, yo, yeah, those two Xfinity Series championships. Speaking of two Xfinity Series championships, Martin Truex Jr. in at number 36. One season ago, eight career victories. Now 16 cup wins and a title. Larry, you mentioned Denny Hamlin. He comes in at 35th. He's got two Southern 500 victories and a Daytona 500 win. Let's hear from his old teammate, Carl oh, Edwards. Uh, Semi-retired, is that what we'll call him? <laughs> Number 34 for cousin Carl, who has an Xfinity championship, but never and at the top level at NASCAR. Number 33. Hey. <laughs> Number three. That's good luck. 21 victories and, of course, a Cup and Xfinity Series championship. Congratulations. It was hard to write my name Were down. You <laughs> <laughs> Were you nervous? Were you a little about anxious about as, as these numbers? Because, I mean, you had to assume that you were probably somewhere in either this group or the very next one. And so, because I know where you voted for yourself. But yeah. were, you, were you getting a little nervous there? I was. I was like, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm glad I got in front of some of those guys. That's for sure. Because especially with a Carl, if he retired, if he doesn't come back, I should hopefully stay in front of him at Dale Jr. But, uh, yeah, it's quite an honor. When I was looking at it, I was like, I'm in front of Martin Shurex today. Hamlin, wow, Dale Jr. And uh, I was getting a little nervous. And I didn't know. But, uh, I mean, obviously, um, it's just quite an honor to be part of it because, uh, you know, had a had a, a cool career doing uh, racing a lot, and uh, to get voted in the top 50 by a lot of the, the obviously the Fox uh, people is uh, is really very humbling. We, we have talked a lot on this show about putting aside the off track accomplishments and, and focusing truly on what people have done on track to make this the best definition of the top 50 drivers that we can come up with. Dale Earnhardt Jr. we just saw. Yeah. It's very difficult to look the other way on all he has meant to this sport away from the racetrack. But you put his numbers on the screen, 26 wins, two Xfinity titles, two Daytona 500s, 
He, he was an unbelievable driver when he had his opportunity, Larry. Yeah, I know there's probably a lot of people going to say, well, it was a popularity vote. It was not a popularity vote because of the numbers you just talked about. Now, this could go back to, okay, what have you done for me lately? But when you take a full snapshot of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s entire career, I mean, he won the all-star race at Charlotte as a rookie. I mean, the numbers just keep stacking up. And let's face it, when you talk about 26 cup wins, that's a lot of cup wins. I don't care who you are or how long you've been driving. I see, I think, I mean, I know you said, what have you done for me lately? I, I think personally Martin should be higher than, than where he is on this list, given his Xfinity Series championships. And he, I mean, 16 victories, it's just 10 less than, than what Junior has. And of course, the Cup Series championship. But again, is it the extended body of work that you guys are looking at rather than just a short period of time? I'm only one of the 21 that voted, so <laughs> I, I can only speak for myself. But, but yeah, I think Adam said this earlier. If we move back in time one year, I'm not sure if we're having a lot of conversation about Martin Trent. Right, yeah. So much happened in a short period of time. Regan, Denny yeah. Hamlin well, does not have a championship, but when you look at the versatility of the tracks where he has won, very impressive resume. Well, Denny's won on every racetrack there is, and he's got the Southern 500s, he's got the Daytona 500, and, and he's been in the discussion of a driver that is basically the best in the circuit yeah. right now to not win that championship. He could win that championship just this year and all of a sudden jump even further up on this list. It, it, it's so hard to say because now we're starting to talk about guys that are still active. We're talking about guys that are still adding to their resume and continuing on to go. I, I look at what Carl Edwards, he won an Xfinity championship, he won the Coke 600, but he's got 28 wins. Yeah. And retired after last year, but yet he didn't have a cup championship. He's not a Hall of Fame nominee. He's not a Hall of Fame member, but yet at the same time winning those 28 races, the Xfinity Championship, all you know, the Coke 600. I mean, I think that gets him somewhere above some other guys that that Let's might have won a championship. It. Those 28 races are tied for 27th most all time. So yeah. that's that's a pretty high up on it, that list. It is, and that's where you go back. You can't just go with one stat. You have to look at it all around, and you can't go with uh, what you think personally. You know, you got to take your emotion out of it, and you got to look at look at the whole picture. And it's that's what makes it so hard to go through here and and, and have it all what we think is correct. Hey, and let, how many other drivers in our top 50 countdown could stand on the door after running 500 <laughs> miles and do a backflip? If nothing yeah. else, that should get him in the top 50. Well, hey, and let, probably let's, helped. Let, let's also say this about Carl. We got to point this out that when Roush was maybe having some of their struggles, he was the one guy you can continue to count on winning races. And, and now we're getting into some of these guys that I've raced against that I can sit there and say, hey, you know what? He got more out of that car than what it had in it. And he was that guy that could always get that added little bit extra. So that, to me, I, I weighed that heavily on my on my votes and as well. And three series, right? I mean, yeah, it, wasn't just, right, it wasn't just one race. It series. I know series. he does not have a championship, but what I watched him do at Homestead Miami Speedway in 2011 racing Tony Stewart, that race yeah. alone would put him in the top 50. I've never seen two drivers drive a race car harder in my life than those two guys. I know he came up second in the points, but it was all due to a tiebreaker. We're, we're a going. Tiebreaker, but there was also a race in that season that he probably should have or almost did win at Darlington, and he didn't that perhaps cost him that championship. Yeah. He reminds me of it all the time. That's why I got to bring that up. <laughs> 32 on our list is Davey Allison. Now, you look at Davey, 19 career wins, Daytona 500. Again, another talented driver whose career was cut short, Shannon. Benny Parsons comes in at 31. Of course, 21 victories. Does have a cup championship and a 500 victory. In at number 30 is Fred Lorenzen. 26 career wins, including a victory in the Daytona 500. How about a guy that's got a cup championship, an Xfinity Series championship, and 24 victories? That would be our friend Brad Keselowski. No surprise the Brad's there. And next to him on the list, number 28, another cup champion, 29 career victories for Kurt Busch, driving now at Stewart Haas Racing. That is right. There, there you go, 27. We got Rex White coming in at 27, right under Kurt Busch, or right above Kurt Busch and Brad Keselowski, I should say. And let's go to 26. This will complete the countdown on day number one. Bobby's brother, Terry, a two-time champion. Of course, uh, went to two different teams when he picked up those two championships. Your reaction, what we saw there, 32 to 26. Let, let's start with you and, and Brother Terry. You both made the top 50. Well, I, I did vote for you a little higher than that. but <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, other people might not have the, the, the lower. But no, really, I mean, you, you think what Terry's done, and obviously I've been part of his career and as a mechanic working uh, back at Hagen Racing back in the day. And, you know, I, I personally, again, it's, it's so... I personally know the the hardships that he went through. I mean, yeah. I remember broken legs. I remember 
uh, ribs mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And but yet at the same time, you look at the two two championships spread apart by many years. Twelve years. Yep, yeah. The IROC championship, um, all the starts. Uh, you know, so you you weigh that in, and I think that you know when I look at when I look at my brother is not just my brother, but look at stats. I think. This guy's pretty tough, and they, they they don't come much tougher than him. So, and and he also won two championships doing that. Yeah, it's 655 consecutive starts. If this was just the Larry Mack vote, you would have not seen Terry Labonte's name today. It would not have been showed up until <laughs> tomorrow. But you know, seeing Davy Allison, I, I know I speak with my heart a little bit. But kind of going back to what I said about Tim Richmond, working with Davy Allison. I know what talent was there, and I know what he would have accomplished had his career not been cut short. And he just had that knack for going out there and winning those big races, the Daytona 500, the Coke 600. He had a knack for really stepping it up when the, when the stakes were high. He is a lot higher on the list than some of the other guys who just have one of those marquee victories. Well, and he's honestly a little higher on, on the list than maybe even was on my list. I knew he was even one of the original NASCAR he 50 was. greatest drivers. So I knew he was going to be on there, and I'm glad to see him on there. I, Regan, I, I think when you look at Davey Allison, he and Tim Richmond, for me, when I was going through the list, were, were in a similar place. Just just because the body of work was so small, but the victories were big and the win percentage was very high. And I think you hit it on the head there. The win percentage is a big deal. And, and Davey Allison won almost 10% of the races. Actually, he did win 10% of the races he ran. 191 races, 19 wins. That's almost right at 10%. And you can't say that that would carry on throughout <coughs> the entire career had he run five, six, 700 races. But had it even carried on close to that, he'd be a guy that we're talking about as 50, 60 wins more than likely. And, and, and I know that's all hypothetical, but to me, I still weighed that in just a little bit. And admittedly, much like Larry, I was that Davey Ellison was my guy as a kid. So I probably weighted him a little bit higher than most because of that. And, and I couldn't get that out of my brain. But that's a personality favorite thing, right? I mean, didn't you say that's uh, not, not how about you did the it? driver? That's just my personality. It's purely my personality at that point. And I had the boat, so I did what there I wanted with it. You know, it's interesting in this segment is, is we've seen a, a couple of names that are, are competing right now. Martin Truex Jr., the, the reigning champion. Uh, who won two Xfinity titles, and Brad Keselowski, who was in front of Martin, who has a, a cup championship and an Xfinity title. Brad in front of Martin, but had almost 10 more career wins. How, how do you manage the difference in, in those two? Yeah, I would say just the, the the success that Brad Keselowski has had almost the entire time he's been here. You know, he won his first career race driving for James Finch at Talladega in that 09 car. So I would say it's probably more about the length of time that he's been here and what he's really accomplished. I can't really say that Brad Keselowski has had any kind of a slump since he's really been here. His, his rookie year was really the only struggle that he's had. Ever since then, he's been consistent. He's been rolling off those three, four, five wins a year, getting the championship thrown in there and, and I, I don't think any of us right here sitting here can say he's not going to get another championship at some point down the road you see Kurt Busch here number 28 you know you had mentioned uh, I think it was Ryan Newman sort of a lull or, or maybe Greg Biffle sort of a lull in their career this doesn't seem to have affect Kurt because they have to say when he left Roush there was some some time and now he's doing what he's done won the 500 with Stuart Haas racing that you don't think that that played into this decision well I think the difference with Kurt is is the lull in Kurt's career came while he was driving equipment that most of us knew was subpar and it wasn't as good as what other guys were in and, and that was because of he did it to himself it was, it was a situation he put himself in but that's where that low came from so I didn't look at those years the same way as maybe I would somebody else who was in top-notch equipment who had teammates that were winning at the same time. I didn't look at those years for Kurt quite the same way. I weighted them just a little bit differently. And I think his championship was a watershed moment in our sport. It was the first wow. year of the playoffs in yep. 2004. So that went in the Daytona 500. But I know we've talked about current drivers. Glad to see Fred Lorenz in there. Sure. You know, again, there's that number, 26 cup wins, big wins, Daytona 500, Coke 600. There was even a time in the 60s, seven Martinsville races. He won five of them. And so I'm, I'm glad. I think he well deserved And only ran 159 yeah, races. Not many it was starts. a small body yes. work. Hey, I, I'm going back to Kurt Busch for a minute. We, we had him at 28. My personalist had him at 29. But when I was doing some research today, wins in 14 different seasons. I almost felt like, man, maybe he should have been higher. That That's a tough accomplishment when you look at the era in which he has raced and the competition that he has faced on a weekly basis.
when you look at this process, it was difficult to determine you know, who should be number one, who should be in the top 10, the, the middle portion of this, the 20 to 30 range, and then the back end, the drivers that, that maybe barely got in and those that just missed. Here are the first four drivers that did not make our top 50. 51, 52, 53, and 54. Jeff Bodine just missing out. Jack Ingram, not a part of our top 50 list. Leroy Yarborough did not make it either. And those first three, they were all a part of the greatest 50 list that came out 20 years ago. Ryan Newman did not make it. When you look at the top 50 drivers all time in NASCAR that we have put together, the, the list that we're going to unveil today. And I, I think the one name on that list that jumped out to me the most. And, and you saw the point differential. Jeff Bodine missed it by one point. Ryan Newman missed it by 24. I want to talk to you guys about Ryan Newman. Here's a guy that has 18 career wins, 51 polls, top 10 all time. He's been competing at NASCAR's top level since 2002, was a rookie of the year over Jimmy Johnson, who, oh, by the way, has won seven championships. And of those 17 years that Ryan has competed in Cup, he's won in 10 of them. I, I was shocked that he was not a part of the top 50. What is the reaction for you guys? I would say probably what hurt Ryan was the fact of what he has maybe done over the last few years. You know, they, there's not been a lot of fruit bared. And I know this is not about what you've just done recently. It's about your career. But I'd be willing to bet that that's probably what hurt Ryan Newman. When I look at that list, the one that shocked me has really nothing to do a lot with the Cup Series. Jack Ingram. 31 Xfinity Series wins, two-time champion, and just became a NASCAR Hall of Famer. Honestly, pretty disappointed from my vote that Jack Ingram did not make the top 50. It, you know, I got I to tell you, I didn't personally have Jack Ingram on my list, and, and I didn't because I weighted this heavily on the cup side. Mm -hmm. To me, it was more important of what you did in the cup series, and he didn't have that success in the cup series, so I didn't look at it quite the same way. So that doesn't, that doesn't bother you. It doesn't have to just necessarily, they don't have to have cup success in order to be on this list. N to me, no. Yeah, yeah, it's heavily weighted on the yep. cup series, but to me, I, I looked at a snapshot of what they had done on the racetrack as a whole. What's yeah. your reaction, Bobby? Yeah, I think Jack Ingram won. I, I know that Ryan's won uh, a lot of races and a lot of polls, but, you know, it's like, dang, championships, you know? Yeah. Jack Ingram's won some championships. But they were Xfinity. They weren't, they, he, I mean, he never won a cup, never won a cup race. No, I, I mean, know. net at the top level, these yeah. are the top 50 drivers all time, never won a cup race. You know what I mean? I race against Jack Ingram. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, I, and, I, so, and that's I, it, I kind of, you know, that's where sometimes it gets a little bit hard when you get down to that list and, like, towards the end, you're like, but I remember racing against him and how tough it was and how tough he was and how many championships he won against the guys that he raced with. So I, I weighted that a little bit. He didn't win a uh, cup championship, he's, he, but he's in the Hall of Fame. You know, he's got Wait, a lot of things. Exactly. That, you have me, Ryan that, To Newman. me, that NASCAR Hall of Fame, that, that, that weighed on me just a little yep. bit, too. But, but you have Ryan Newman, right, who has 18 wins in the Cup Series. He's won the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard. Those are elite races. Yep. And for, for three different not, teams. I, for him not to be yep. in that list. But to Larry's point earlier, he has one win in the last five years. And I think that really weighs heavily yeah. on what we thought about when we did this. And, and Newman, uh, full disclosure, he was, he was on my list. He was off my list. That last 10, 10 guys from 40 to 50 was the hardest part of this list for me. I juggled I, that forever. I lost sleep on those. That last 10. <laughs> Ryan Newman <laughs> was a restart away from winning a cup championship. Yep, and he's, he's won races at the top level in 10 different years. And, and honestly, he really wasn't close. That, that's why we weight 50. the championship so heavily, though. Yep. That's why yeah. it's such a big deal. Yeah. I have no idea who the top 50 are, but I bet you there's going to be some drivers in the top 50 that defeat the theory of has to be cup series. Yeah. And I think it's going to defeat the theory about having championships in the other NASCAR series. Yep. Folks at no home question. cannot see this, but uh, the boys up here are starting to glisten a little bit. So <laughs> they're, they're starting to get a little bit worked up. And I know that they're definitely going to be that way when this list starts to come out. It's time. Let's go to the yeah. top 25, shall we? Let's we start with number 25 on today's show. And 25th on the all-time list, two-time champion, Joe Weatherly. Shannon. Yeah, number 24, 99 champion, Dale Jarrett. Got a couple of 500 wins as well. A couple of three 500 wins. In at 23, 33 career cup wins for Fireball Roberts. Number 22 on the list, Bobby Isaac. 37 wins, 19 poles. 
No crown jewels, though, guys. That's one thing we could talk about. And at number 21, the 2003 champ, 39 career wins for Matt Kenseth, who, of course, retired at the end of 2017. So a quick recap, 21 to 25, you got Kenseth, <coughs> Isaac, Roberts, Jarrett, and Joe Weatherly. Larry, let's start with you. When you look at that group, who jumps out? Well, I had Dale Jarrett a little bit higher than this. Mm -hmm. I actually had him 20th. He, he has that championship. And it, uh, those crown jewel wins, yeah. three Daytona 500s. Now, of those drivers right there, the one driver that I did not have in the top 25 was Fireball Roberts. Because I'm going to go back to what I said last night. I had Terry Labonte in the top 25. Terry Labonte had two championships. Fireball Roberts had a few more wins, but zero cup championships. Anyone? I mean, Fireball Roberts, I mean, that's, that's where you're – your sort of voting process, right? I mean, it's all about the victories. So did you have him in the top 25? Absolutely, absolutely. 33 wins is a lot of wins at the cup level. Uh, I think that deserves a lot of respect. And if you look at Fireball's career record, he didn't have a lot of starts. He, he passed away tragically in an incident at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, so he had a lot more of a runway left, I think, Larry, to win championships. So just going off of pure races one, uh, I think his record is pretty strong. Dale Jarrett won a championship in 1999, a year before you yep. got your title, Bobby. You look at his resume, won a couple of brickyards three times. He went the victory lane in the Daytona 500. 32 career victories. You agree with Dale Jarrett at 24? I really do, and I had him on my list definitely higher than me because I didn't do all the stuff that he did. <laughs> it was very impressive with what, what he was able to accomplish and uh, winning that championship the year before me in 1999 and, and obviously win the Daytona 500, the Brickyard. Uh, you know, again, just a, a very consistent race car driver, and, uh, you know, he was very masterful behind the wheel. You know, you wouldn't see him go out there and maybe lead like – some guys do nowadays a lot of laps, but yet he could always finish the top five, top tens, and, and be able to win a championship and very consistent and win the big races too. 21 to 25. Who catches your eye, Casey? 21 to 25. <laughs> yeah, I love that group. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Matt Kenseth, because he's more recent. You know, that's one thing that, uh, I mean, obviously what he's, a he's accomplished with the wins and obviously winning a championship. And, and like I said in my opening comments, having raced with Matt, you can appreciate what he does. When you've raced against somebody side by side and you see what he pulls out of a race car, he definitely deserves to be fairly high on this Yeah, list. 39 cup wins. You talk about 33, yep. a lot of cup wins. 39 is a lot. Two Daytona 500s. He made the playoffs 13 out of 14 years. I I definitely had Matt Kenseth a little higher than me. Multiple wins in 10 years that he raced full time in the Cup Series as well. So, yeah, I'm not. The Matt Kenseth one doesn't surprise me as much as, as like you said, the Dale Jarrett one. That really surprised me because you've got him below Fireball Roberts and Bobby Isaac. I mean, and, and all of those crown jewels that Dale Jarrett had, plus the championship, I, I just, I, I mean, it, it plays into your theory, which is the victories are so much more important. His winning percentage. Shannon was, was so strong, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. He's got a lot of wins. Of course, he did have a Daytona 500, and you get in the championships, and there's a lot of what could have been had he made it longer in his career. Brad, you talk about the all-time wins. Did you wait victories, especially for a guy like Dale Jarrett, who won the crown jewels on multiple occasions? No, I didn't. Uh, of course, crown jewels are great. I, everybody wants to win the Daytona 500, uh, the Brickyards, uh, and the Southern 500s, the Coca-Cola 600s. Those are great races, but at the end of the day, we go out there and we put the same effort week in and week out to win a race, whether it's Daytona or Martinsville, we want to win. Now, if you put it on fact of polls, Bobby Isaac, there is yeah. a poll sitting fool right there. <laughs> Four, 49 polls. In fact, in 1969, he sat on 19 polls. That's a record that stands today that I think will never be broken if you really look at the number of races we run. It's time for the top 20 and in at number 20 on our list, Tim Flock, two championships, 39 career victories. Shannon. Number 19, he has 40 wins, but no cup championships. And that would be Mr. Mark Martin. Kevin Harvick is in at number 18, 40 career victories and won that championship in 2014. And how about this guy? Very, very popular, Bill Elliott. He is coming in at 17 on our list. Saw Buddy Baker yesterday. Today it's Buck Baker in at number 16, won the championship in 56 and 57, a three-time Daytona 500 winner, 46 career victories for him. So a reminder, 16 to 20, you got Baker there, Bill Elliott inside the top 20. Kevin Harvick in at 18. Mark Martin in the NASCAR Hall of Fame is 19th. And Tim Flock, 20th 
on our list. Let's go to Kevin Harvick, all right, a guy that we see competing now won the championship in 2014. He's in at 18th. I had him at 13th when I voted. And, and one of the reasons why is in addition to all those cup wins, he's been outstanding in the Xfinity Series, has a championship there. Brad is a guy that com competes against him on a weekly basis. What do you think about Kevin in at 18? I had Kevin in at 18. <laughs> That's what I think. I, I, perfect. That's exactly where he is in the wins list. And, and I, I think it's great to have won the two Xfinity championships. I believe he's won yes. along with Daytona 500s. Uh, and you look at his wins and his average finish in the modern era is incredible. He's in the 13s. The only driver in the modern era with a better average finish than Kevin Harvick is Jimmy Johnson. And I have a feeling we're going to see him later on. Two Coke <laughs> 600s, a Daytona, a Brickyard, yeah. a Southern 500, two Xfinity championships, and a cup championship. In my opinion, he should I'm, be higher. I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite disappointed he that he is as low as he is because, again, the 40 cup wins, 47 Xfinity Series wins, 14 truck wins, three championships in the top three series, and one big races. The Daytona 500, the Brickyard. He's also won in 15 well, yeah, of the 18 I, I'm, seasons I'm, that he's been I had him. I had him at 12th. Uh, you know, I had him as high, is about as high as any of our active drivers other than Jimmy Johnson. Okay, let's go Mark Martin. I mentioned he's in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Here's a guy that didn't win a championship, Bobby. But when you look at his stat line, Mark got to victory lane 40 times. Five times he was a runner-up at the cup level as far as winning a championship. And 49 Xfinity victories. You race with him a lot. Should he have been? higher than 19th well he should have been I, I i really picked him right around uh i was about a 20th 23rd i think you know and i now i look back and i go maybe i should have went a little higher on that but obviously mark martin didn't win a championship but gosh i mean he won so many races he finished I rocked, a lot of the five, 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 five times time. yeah, yeah, exactly. it was like a five times but also won four i think four i rock championships four or five and I, just absolutely one of the the greatest drivers, I think, you know, and I hate now that I feel bad about that I didn't put him higher than that, but that's where you go back and you don't know where you should put people at all times if you rank them totally by wins or by championships and you, you put them in the Hall of Fame. So it's, it's difficult, but he is definitely, he drove my race car a few times. He was awesome. In my opinion, too, he's one of those guys I talked about at the beginning. He got more out of a car than it gave him, you know, and he did it on a consistent basis. He's always putting laps on the board. Every practice, he's one of the fastest guys, and he's just one of those guys I feel that overperformed. Okay, yeah. I think this is a case, Adam, where yesterday we heard, Bobby, I think it was you, talk about the fact that you raced these guys. And for Mark Martin to finish second in the championship five different times, these guys on the racetrack, they knew how tough that was, and it's a lot more than just numbers on a stat sheet. Uh, I want to talk about Bill Elliott, 37 years full-time in the Cup Series. But, you know, we, when you saw his final years, obviously not as successful as he was earlier, but he's got so many victories, 44 of them, a Cup championship. So did you guys expect him to be in this section or maybe a little bit higher, Brad? I think it's a perfect section for him. Two-time Daytona 500 winner, three-time Southern 500 winner. Those are crown jewels like we've talked all along. Uh, but I think this was a perfect fit for him. He did have the one uh, championship at the highest level in the, in the Cup Series, uh, but he didn't have any championships in Xfinity or, or trucks. So I think when you look at him and you compare him to Kevin Harvick, he, I think very comparable. Yeah, he's a, this is about where I had him. And we think about those crown jewel races. Just remember this. Bill Elliott was the first guy to win that Winston Million mm -hmm. for winning three of th those four races back in 1985. The one championship. This is about where I had him. But I want to go back to Mark Martin. I can't get off this Mark <laughs> Martin bandwagon. Oh boy. And this is one that just jumped out to me. Five-time IROC champion. People probably go, what the hell's IROC? Yeah. Well, that's where they would take 12 drivers from all walks of racing, <clears throat> put them in equally matched race cars, and race them four races in a year. Mark won the IROC championship five times, and to me, that was huge. Yep. And he also won the All-Star race twice. So he's a win. I mean, he won a lot of races, and winning the IROC championship, I think, definitely should be higher than where he's at. Yeah, and, that's and we're talking about it. Yeah, Mark Martin, <laughs> yeah. Bill Elliott, certainly a fan favorite. I know you guys said that that's not part of the voting, but it, it was a little bit. It swayed some of my decisions. So we have number 15, and that would be Junior Johnson. 50 victories at the cup level for Junior Johnson. Last driver that did not win a championship. Rusty did win a title. Wallace in at number 14, the 1989 cup champ. Shannon. And driver of the number 13 car, Herb Thomas. How about this? 
48 wins over 10 years at the elite level. Two-time champion. And then at number 12, Kyle Busch won the championship in 2015. 43 cup wins, 91 times to victory lane in the Xfinity Series. Number 11 is Hall of Famer Ned Jarrett. 50 victories and a two-time cup champion for Mr. Jarrett. So here they go. Our top five in the top 15, Junior Johnson, Rusty Wallace, Herb Thomas, there is Kyle Busch. We were all wondering when he was gonna pop into the list. And Ned Jarrett. Okay, so I wanna start with Kyle Busch here because we were having a conversation before we came back on camera where Kyle Busch only has three more victories than Kevin Harvick. And Kevin Harvick has all of those crown jewels. So is this where Kyle should be? Well, I, I don't think that a lot of the voters went down Brad's road as far as just cup wins. It has to be because of all the other wins. You know, he is over 180 yep. total wins in the top three series. Now, I still don't put him in the category of Richard Petty because he's that close to 200 wins because Richard Petty's 200 wins. But you think about it, in the top three series, that's a lot of wins, and he's still in his early 30s with a long way to go. Let, let's play a little up-down with Kyle Busch. He ultimately comes in at 12. J just quickly, up, up or down, would you have him higher or, or lower? Bobby, where do you go? I, I, I think about the same, about where he's at. I mean, I actually didn't have him that high, but, you know, when you think about it, um, you know, I had him a little bit lower than that, but I think I'm glad to see him in this group of five because uh, the fact that, like what Larry said, uh, the, the, he won all the races, and we you know, can't forget the Snowball Derby. He won that race. <laughs> too, you know? So there's so many that he's, that he's done, and he's, he's, he's just an excellent driver all the time when he goes out to, to compete against anybody in everything he drives. I had him at number 17, Bobby. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where he's at on the wins list. Uh, but I have to give him a lot of credit because he's won at every racetrack yep. in this, yep. on the circuit, and that, that's, to me, something that's big. Yeah, I mean, I had him roughly where he was at. And that's what, what makes it so hard is when you're thinking about that next group that, that is above him, you know, and you start looking at those guys and go, should he be above those guys? Should he be below those guys? But obviously for what you guys said, as far as all the ways he's run, how competitive he's been in every single series that he's been in, it's, it's hard to put him any lower than really where he's sitting right now. An he interesting person on this list also for me is Junior Johnson. No cup championships, but, and, and wonder, Brad, you take this into consideration, 150 wins as an owner. So he didn't only win... Yeah as a driver, but he also won as an owner. Did, did that count at all? No. Nothing. No. Uh, it's about 50 drivers, not owners Here's and drivers. Thing. He won 16% of the races that he competed in. Oh, that's so impressive. That's I like that stat. And you know what I, I really like about Junior Johnson is I think about his legacy as a driver. He's the guy that first figured out the draft. There you go. There and you and go. when I think of great drivers, and maybe this is just me, I think of guys that set precedents, that set trends, that continue for decades. I think of Dale Jun or Dale Earnhardt, how he learned how to work the draft better than anyone else. And he set a template that drivers to this day still follow of how to draft. And I think of Junior Johnson, he set the template for just learning what the draft was and how to use it from the very start. Uh, I think of David Pearson and some of the moves that he made with the slingshot. Those were impressive moves. So I think of tactics and Junior Johnson created some of the modern tactics we know today. So Interesting tactics note. or wins? Wins. It still comes to wins, but I love his tactics. Yeah. Interesting note, though, about Junior Johnson, Larry. He's number 15. He'll be the highest that we have on our top 50 list that has not won a championship. And so he garners that distinction. Yeah, and when I look at this group right here, I mean, I was not off on a lot of these right here as far as where I had them, but a lot of them are real close to that 50-win era. Yeah, Junior Johnson did not have a, win a championship, but then I think about Ned Jarrett. You, you know, Ned really did not race that many years. And to win those championships and to win the two cup championships and 50 cup wins, and think about this. Bobby, you've won the Southern 500. He won the Southern 500 one year by 14 laps. <laughs> Is that good? Uh, I think I'm just kidding. That's, I'm pretty, just kidding. that's pretty solid. That's pretty pretty good. Good. I think I'll last a long time. I think I won by 14 feet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I, and I think, you know, you're right. Ned is, you know, another one of those guys won two championships, obviously won the Southern 500 by that many laps. But, you know, he didn't, he didn't race a lot, but his percentage of wins, his percentage right. of uh, top five finishes, top ten finishes, very impressive. Championships, if you were categorizing championships, championships he should be way up there and wins same way so I think he's in the right place I got I gotta stop real quick and say Rusty Wallace 14th <laughs> that's an abomination he is <laughs> number nine on the all-time win list champion it. 14th <laughs> Number 10 is Lee Petty, first driver to win three championships, 54 
career win, Shannon. Number nine, Tony Smokes Stewart. 49 wins and three cup championships. In at number eight, Bobby Allison, 83 career, uh, 83 champion, 84 career wins, and a three time Daytona 500 winner, three Coke 600s. Four times he went to victory lane in the Southern 500. What a list. A couple of Hall of Famers and a guy that will be there very soon. I, I go to Lee Penny at number 10. If you look at his stat line, the first driver to win three championships, yet he's number 10 on our list. It speaks to the volume of the numbers put up by the guys at this stage. Whew. I'm scared. <laughs> no, I, I did have him number 11. So, I mean, this is obviously impressive. And what I was talking about earlier, he didn't have an airplane to go to the races either. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. So he won he a lot of races. Right in there. Oh, yeah. He won I, a lot I, of races. He drove yeah. his race car. He drove races. his race yeah. car. So yeah. you think about the, the, the time and the races that he won. Uh, you know, when you, when you put all that in perspective, that's like, that's a pretty tough dude right there. So, so you, you got to believe, and I had him at number 11. So I, I like the way I picked him. I like the way everybody else picked him because he was in the top 10. I think it's very impressive that he was able to do that uh, that length of time. Yeah, he was the first driver to get to 50 cup wins. But I think what makes this group so tough is these guys right here and some more that's going to be coming up that we're quite sure is we're getting into now those three and four championships in the Cup Series. I think this is where, this is the toughest part of it to me right here. Yeah. And just a reminder to everyone at home, everyone here is just finding out about this list for the very first time. So Adam and I did know coming into this show, but everybody sitting up here, they have no idea who is going to be the top five or the top 25 or whatever. So, okay, let's talk about Bobby Allison for a second because you talk about doing it for the old guys, right? He won race after 50 years old, but he's got the 85 Cup wins. Do you think he should have been higher on this list? Yeah, I think the only <laughs> thing that may be held him back just a little bit and I know you're you're nodding because of the wins uh, and, and of course we think about we think about Kale Bobby and Daryl kind of together but I think what tips the scale toward Daryl and Kale is the fact that they have those three championships and Bobby only got the one yep. championship in the Cup Series Bobby won all the big races multiple times mm -hmm. and Bobby was racing non-stop every night of the week but I think probably this is about right for Bobby because of only that one championship. You are thumbs down over there, Brad. <laughs> Larry gets have? a big thumbs down over here. Where'd Bobby Allison at eight is terrible. That's ridiculous. Where'd you have him? Bobby's number four, easily. Uh, you look at what he's did. No, he didn't get the championships, but look at the rides he had. he had. He had good rides, don't get me wrong, but he had a lot of rides that would break down, and you didn't win the championship in his eras if you broke down. But I look at Bobby as a driver, and, and he he was a racer's racer. Oh, yeah. He knew everything about his race that. car. If he wasn't racing on a Thursday night, he found somewhere else to race. And he was just a great all-around driver in his era. And I also think about his era. He's one of the few drivers that has – the win percentage that he has in categories that raced close to the modern era. Some of these guys like Lee and, and Ned have tremendous win percentages, but they race in a completely different era. Bobby raced into the modern era mm -hmm. and still was able to win and be successful. I think Winning he deserves it. a lot more credit. A lot of races, too. Yeah. Casey, Winning Tony Stewart. Yes. Tony Stewart in at number nine, three-time champion, 49 victories. But but one of the most impressive to me, there's only three tracks where he competed that he, he didn't win. Kentucky and Rockingham, he didn't get many opportunities. And, and then Darlington, your thoughts on Tony Stewart being inside the top. Yeah, I mean, we, we all know Tony really deserved to be here. He's one of the best drivers that's been in the sport. Um, you know, and being able to race side by side with Tony, you see it. You see what he does with the car and what he what he made happen over the course of his career. So, um, you know, definitely deserves to be inside this top ten. And you mentioned yesterday the home race with Carl Edwards, which is the reason that both of those guys should be. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never seen two drivers run a race any harder than those two guys ran the last closing laps of that race. I, I will have to say, being Tony's uh, teammate for many years at Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, I always admired his desire and the, the will that he had to wheel anything that was in front of him, any type of race car. It wasn't just the cup wins that impresses me about Tony Stewart. It's all the wins from IRL to I rock, I beat him in one I rock deal. But anyway, so it just and all of them. That's what impresses me about Tony, and I had him right about about yeah. that number. But 49 wins is awesome. It is time now for our top seven drivers. We've already had some great conversations, and we're going to continue to do that. So let's just get straight to the top seven. We'll start with number seven, and that is K. 
Kale Yarbrough, the three-time cup champion with 83 victories, comes in at seven. Number six, Daryl Waltrip, Fox's own three-time champion, 84 career victories. And number five would be Dale Earnhardt. So don't get mad at the messenger. I'm just relaying the message to everybody at home. But number five is Dale Earnhardt. And I think that's where we have to start this conversation because I'm assuming that there's a lot of people who would probably expect him to be higher than number five on this list. Bobby, I see you squirming <laughs> over there. Yep. You raced with him yep. on the racetrack. What do you think about Dale Earnhardt at fifth? I, I had him at, at actually number two. I, I thought, obviously, uh, I raced against Dale and he uh, <clears throat> taught me so much. And, and, and as far as driver behind the wheel, I mean, we get to the point now where you think of Bobby Allison, you think of Kale Yarber, you think of David Pearson. Lot, some of these guys I didn't race with, but, um, but at the same time, I think that, um, you know, in comparison, I think that this guy could, could go out there and, and race uh, short tracks or anything that he wanted to. He can win on a road course. He can develop, help develop the uh, drafting better than everybody else did back when Junior did. So it's just definitely, I, I thought he should be higher than that with all that he's done in the sport. Seven championships. And I think you just said it, Bobby, so educational in the way he brought the sport along and whether he was telling drivers how to do it, people were learning from him along the sure. way. Now, by your theory, Brad, he's in the right place, right? Because yeah, actually, or he's actually ahead of where you would have he's scheduled him. Number eight on but, the wins list. But seven championships, one of three drivers to accomplish that. And, and that's a big mark. Don't get me wrong. He had a great team. And, and I think, quite honestly, if you look at his team, though, his team was known for chasing championships. That's what RCR was. RCR was never a flashy, let's go out and win every race. Dale carried him sometimes, and he won a lot of races. But I always thought of RCR as the chase a championship, never break down, semi-conservative team with the most aggressive driver in the field. <laughs> So if you're looking at championships, I, I think there's a little bit of a skew towards him probably getting a few more championships than what he was uh, should have been able to get in wins. The, the stat that really kind of stands out to me and that shows just how – dominant he was was the fact that he won his first championship in his second full-time season and, and you were on top of that pit box well I, I wasn't then but not I, then yeah. obviously but you did for a period of time so you're I mean you're, you're I, I've been silent because I'm totally lost for words yeah. how in the world the 21 of us put Dale Earnhardt Sr. fifth is just absolutely yeah, beyond me 76 wins he finished in the top two in points Ten times, seven championships, and three second-place finishes. And I go back to something you said earlier, Brad, the era that he was doing this in. He was doing it when competition was really starting to get stout. I want to have a little bit of prayer meeting with the other 20 people. Hey, 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 Larry, and here you go, okay? We, we had six of our panelists that voted Earnhardt second. One, me being one of them. And, yep, and, yeah. and there were actually four of our panelists who had him voted eight. Mm -hmm. So that starts to give you a little insight. Now, yeah, I want the four sure. names. <laughs> well, well I, and, I think one of them's out of here because don't shoot, us, Larry, don't shoot but, but Brad said it was based on victories, but Brad wouldn't be the only one. Yeah. You, you know, you know, statistically, based on how we came to our conclusion of the top 50, someone had to vote him far down the line because there are yeah. many that said he's in the top three because he won those seven championships. Championships. There are the hard numbers. Brad, one of the four that voted him as far down as I like eight. them. Don't be mad at me. It. Don't hate me, please. But I, I just see I love you, Brad. I just don't understand you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really hard for me to see how he could be outside the top five at, at, at best, you know, because um, obviously everything he's accomplished. But then he talked about Junior Johnson being one of the first guys to kind of, you know, learn the draft. And Bobby mentioned it. But really, the, the talk in the garage as soon as I came to the sport was if you wanted to know how to draft, you wanted to talk to Dale Earnhardt Sr., you know, and talking about feeling the air, making things happen that a lot of people didn't even know about for a lot of years. So, um, you know, he obviously talented, you know, beyond all what we can really comprehend, but uh, I don't see him being eighth. I see him being much higher. Okay, yep. so obviously the surprise of this, li this list is most recent names, so Dale Earnhardt, but we did have two others that we just announced, and that is number seven, Cale Yarbrough, and number six, Daryl Waltrip. According to your calculations, Brad, DW should be higher on this list. Yeah, I had DW at fifth. So not a big change, but definitely a, just a touch higher. I, I think what we're going to see here is that Jimmy Johnson and Daryl Waltrip was a real tough vote for the panel because their stats and championships are, are a little bit stretched, but in wins are very close, very similar.
Yeah, I had Daryl, I had exactly where he at in six. And not because he didn't deserve to be higher, it's because of drivers that I definitely ranked in the top five. You know, I look back at his 1981 and 1982 season when he won two of his three championships. 24 wins, 12 each one of those years. Certainly, I'm not saying Daryl didn't deserve to be higher than six, but it's because of the top five that I actually voted for. Won a Daytona 500, won a Southern 500, and five times won the Coke 600. So not only did he win the championships, won the races, he did so on the big stage, Casey. Yeah, I mean, and you got to, you know, to, to do that, you got to have speed. You got to be consistent. You can't make mistakes. You know, at this level, we're getting into the group of guys now that make things happen, you know, in adverse situations. And, you know, oftentimes he had fast cars but also made it happen with cars that weren't necessarily uh you know as fast as they should have been so um that this is where i started getting really impressed with these guys that make things happen we are ready to unveil the top my car just four so you know. drivers yeah you should take an uber home by the way <laughs> and vet out the driver really good before you go number four fox analyst jeff gordon a four time champion and uh, number three is David Pearson. 105 victories for old Pearson. Okay, so here we go. We've still got two left, but we wanted to talk about three and four before we get into one and two. And you guys have been collectively talking about it off camera. Thoughts on these two guys? Yeah, I actually had Jeff just a little bit higher than this, maybe only about one spot. You know, I, we think about Crown Jewel wins. You think about the Daytona 500, the Coke 600, the Brickyard 400, and the Southern 500. Of his 93 wins, 17 of them came not at those venues, but at those particular races, those, those races throughout the season. Season. So I, I had Jeff a little bit higher, but I, I guess uh, when my bracket fell out the bottom with Dale Earnhardt being fifth, I, 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 I just kind of have to put them where I think they go now. I'm just glad yeah. you're still here, actually. Yeah, I actually, actually, I had him higher as well. And I mean, he had, he had nine road course wins. He was a very yeah. versatile driver, right? He was good on every single course. Obviously, you know, one of those big, huge tracks that we all admire so much. So I actually put Jeff a little bit higher. And, and again, Eric kind of comes into play a little bit. You know, you start thinking about when he did it, how he did it, how dominant he was at the time when he did it. And uh, I had him a little higher. He completely dominated from 94 to 2007. 81 of his victories were during that time. And just a reminder, he was on that original 50 list that NASCAR put out 20 years ago. So stayed on the list and, and pretty high. Yeah. yeah, Jeff deserves a, a lot of credit for his career. I had him uh, real close. I had him at number three. Uh, but I want to talk about David Pearson real quick. David Pearson to me. I thought he might have been in contention to be number one. His win percentage was phenomenal. In fact, of his starts, he won 2% more of the time than Richard Petty did. And you put that in perspective, less than half the starts of Richard Petty, but almost half the wins at 105. So I got a lot of respect for David Pearson. So him coming in at number three, yeah, that, that one's a little tough for me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, growing up as a kid, watching races and stuff like that, I mean, David Pearson was that guy that went out there, and he was, uh, you know, always giving Petty a run for his money. So yeah. if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for Petty, if it wasn't for Pearson, Petty would have won a lot more races. But at the same time, Petty won so, uh, Pearson won so many races with a short amount of starts, like you said. And the Silver Fox, I mean, obviously, his win percentage was awesome. So you got you to gotta think that he's going to be up there. But I, I want to say one thing about Jeff Gordon. I think I was there for all of his wins, and I got a few in between. I like to think that he's really competitive, like you said, Shannon, yeah. because at that time, I was a part of that era that he was in. And I can tell you right now, he was one of the toughest competitors that we had. Earnhardt obviously was right there with him at that in the era that I drove and was competitive when I was. Yeah, and, and you look at Pearson, of his 105 wins, he, he won a lot of big races. And I don't know if anybody has ever gotten around Darlington, South Carolina, better than the Silver Fox, David Pearson, and qualifying. I mean, I don't know how many consecutive poles he set on at Charlotte Motor Speedway, but he had 113 <coughs> career poles, and he actually went 17 years, consecutive years, with one win. I guess if we go down the road of Brad and wins, yeah, David is a little behind of what we think he should yep. be at those 105 wins yeah. out of 574 starts. Uh, you know, I would argue that David Pearson might have been the most feared race car driver out there. When yep. he just showed up, he could win in anybody's car. And you, you think about car owners and how car owner dependent the sport is about having a quality ride. Pearson could win in anything.
We know who the top two are. It's just a matter of which order will they nervous. come in. I'm nervous. I, I, I know the answer, and I'm I nervous. I do, too, yes. Here we go. Number two on our top 50 list, seven-time champion, driver of the 48, Jimmy Johnson. And then there was one. It's a position fit for a king, and that is where number one, Richard Petty, sits on top of the list of the top 50 drivers as per Race Hub and Fox Sports. So uh, this was the toss-up, I think, for a lot of people. Where where do you place Jimmy Johnson considering everything that he's done? The seven championships, the five in a row, the different cars, the different formats, everything that he's been through. How do you compare him to the king? What do you think about this? Well, I'll probably have to take the same Uber that Brad takes home. <laughs> but, but when I think about exactly what you said, the competition level with Jimmy Johnson today, he if you look at his 16 full seasons, not including this year, he won championship seven out of 16. And the different rules package. That, I think they kept moving the playoff format around <laughs> trying to chase his championship. So I had Jimmy Johnson number one. Wow. Casey, yeah. where, where did you have Jimmy Johnson? I did. I picked him number one, you know, and, and uh, not taking any way, anything away from Richard. His, what he's done for our sport and throughout his career is absolutely amazing. Um, but, but again, you got to think about time, era, um, the amount of cars that were competitive and could win races, you know, at the time that they did it, the, the, the wins in a row, the championships in a row. Um, you know, in my mind, I, I picked Jimmy to be number one. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest with you. I guess I'll take the Uber ride with everybody else. I had, I had him at number five. I, I thought that, you know, obviously Jimmy is uh, is, is going to be – there's he's not going to be knocked down on the top 50 for hundreds of years. But at the same time, I thought with the equipment that he has today, in my mind, it's very stellar. I mean, he's got some really great equipment, great teammates. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not difficult. But this is all he had to do was really concentrate on – winning those races and winning those championships. Different era than Richard Petty, you know what I mean? So, so a lot of stuff had to go into it, but I'm, I'm obviously raced against him, very impressed with what all he did, and there's no doubt that he deserved to be right where he's at. Well, I, I gotta say one thing that, that makes this t difficult for me. Uh, Jimmy Johnson's still active. He's the only driver, I mean, really in the top 15 in our list here that's still active. So on this day of April, 2018, <laughs> He's not in the top five for me. He's six. I, I, I got to get this straight. But, so you had Jimmy Johnson fifth, and you had Dale Earnhardt eighth. Yeah, but he still have he has career left to keep winning. So let me ask this question. Let me ask this question. How how does career left matter if you look at their accomplishments today? And you measure whether it's Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, Kale Yarbrough, David Pearson, Jimmy Johnson. If you lay their stats out, how does future potential impact today how we sit here where they rank in the top 50? Well, if Jimmy wins another championship and goes off and wins another five or ten more but forget races, that. I Let think just, that makes a big difference. But as of today. But I think right now he's earned number five to number six. I have him number six on the list. I appreciate the era he's racing. His winning percentage for his era is by far the highest. Mm -hmm. there, there's no doubt about that. His average finish – by far the highest for the areas he's won in, but he's still a lot of wins behind Bobby Allison, Jeff Gordon, David Pearson. Eight Pearson, championships, yeah. would, would that help him? Would that make him leapfrog? Because, I mean, if, if he might have a championship if it wasn't for you right now. All right, so, <laughs> hey, we're, we're going to put up we're gonna put up our top 50 list. We'll do the, the 25 from yesterday, then the 25 for today. Highlighted in yellow, the new drivers that were not a part of the original 50 that came out 20 years ago. And, and you can uh, watch that as we continue to visit. You know, R Richard Petty, you, you voted Jimmy Johnson number one. Larry, how much stress between? Jimmy and the King because it's pretty hard to, to look across his numbers and not make him the number one. Yeah, guy. I would never dilute what the King has done, but of the three hours I worked on it, I probably spent two hours and 50 minutes on those two drivers right there. <laughs> just so here, because I, it's just, again, to me, it's almost compared a banana to an apple. So do we all agree, or, or maybe not, if Jimmy was to win an eighth championship? He's, I'm like he's, Adam. I don't think that top. has nothing to do with nothing. it. I just don't. Might to win 12 more championships. I think it has something to do with it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I, 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 I voted Jimmy Johnson number one. And, and the difference for me, one was air. And I think Casey made a, a great point when you look at the level of competition. The other one, five consecutive championships yes. at the level of competition in the different format. That, that, that blows me away. And to me, might be the greatest feat this sport ever seen. With a lot of different rules. Yeah, but I don't like championships. I like winning them for me. <laughs> I don't like winning them for this list. Too many different formats, chases, playoffs, all this different stuff. Now, nah, championships. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your honesty and the time in this list. Thank you to everybody at home who joined in on this conversation. We couldn't have done it without you.